The latest this morning from our DC Bureau as we get a closer look into the GOP primary and the immigration policies of the two top candidates, Donald Trump and Ron DeSantis. Here's Kaplan News reporter Alexander Howard. For many South Floridian immigrants, if Donald Trump regains his seat in the White House or our governor manages to snag the presidential nomination, they worry about how it may affect their personal lives. Donald Trump is campaigning in Houston today. He's exploring a radical shift in immigration policy if elected in 2024. The former president said mass deportations, an end to birthright citizenship, and ideological screenings are part of his plan. How his ideas would impact legal and undocumented migrants. We also need to remove the incentives to come illegally to begin with. And that means employment, that means taxpayer finance benefit. It also means this idea that you can come across the border uh, two days later, have a child, and somehow that's an American citizen. Born in Peru and immigrated to the United States at three years old, Diego Dulanto Falcón is a beneficiary of the 2012 Obama administration immigration policy, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals, and is one of the more than 24,000 in the state of Florida. To this day, it defines everyday life, from how he can afford a master's degree to applying for a job. But he says that the immigration policies from presidential candidates, who he says are outright anti-immigrant, worry him for the next generation of undocumented immigrants. Uh, it's nothing new. Um, this, this was happening back in 2016 when, when Trump took office, um, and even before that. You know, Trump and DeSantis have always been anti-immigrant, um, very anti-undocumented. It makes me angry. You know, uh, 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 like I said, I'm tired of feeling anxious and fearful, so I'm not afraid anymore. Um, but it definitely makes me angry and upset for what could happen for the rest of my community who doesn't have the privilege to not be afraid anymore. Mayumi Kanashiro is also an immigrant from Peru. She was raised there and came to the U.S. at 12 years old, and she says having a higher education here has given her many opportunities to give back to her community. Um, when you are like in higher education, kind of stop seeing the world through your little bubble. You kind of get out of your bubble, and you see other communities. What pushed me to join Florida Student Power was my eagerness to learn more about the political um, climate of the U.S. It kind of opened my eyes to knowing that it is important for youth to get together and to talk about politics and the politics that we would like to see in our in the future, in our future. Florida Student Power is a nonprofit organization that helps youth become more civically involved in their communities, especially those communities who are negatively impacted by politics, including immigrants. I really encourage everybody listening to get connected to community organizations working in your community and thinking about how we are showing up to build that reality, whether it's um, voting, right, regardless, and, and in whichever way you're voting but being engaged, right, and also asking questions and being part of the conversation when these moments uh, are happening and asking ourselves how we want to show up for the healing of our broader world. For now, Donald Trump is leading in the GOP polls, and some polling is predicting he may secure a win against President Biden if he gains a nomination for his party. And from the immigrants I've spoken to, they believe voting is a way to see change.